Hi, I'm Jay Schur, along with my dad, Jim Ritter, for CWTV Television. Today we're here in Emmaus Community Park for Earth Day Recycling and Community Projects. We caught up with Jesse O'Donnell. Jesse is the chairperson for today's event, and she's also the chairperson for the Joint Emmaus Upper Milford Environmental Advisory Council. Boy, I got that all in one sentence. I did pretty well. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad you could be here this morning. Okay. Well, thank you for inviting us for today's activities. Can you tell our audience what's going to be happening today? We have volunteers coming out to the park and they go to different areas in our community to pick up the trash that we see along the highways. Um, also along the Weiss parking lot and that area of Emmaus behind the car wash um, and here in our beautiful park. So they come in here about 8 o'clock and they register and then they break up into groups and go do cleanup. Um, our event is registered with the um, Department of Environmental in Pennsylvania as a cleanup event. So then we register back all of our, doc all of our data, which is how many bags of trash and how many tons of electronics that we recycle. Um, Upper Milford Township and Emmaus Borough have generously donated money um, to the Joint Advisory Council to sponsor two electronics recycling trucks. So that brings the responsible recycling services in from Kutztown um, with two of their trucks. So we have residents dropping off recycling materials for that. Um, Senator Brown, Representative Simmons, and Nutripoli Bank has been generous enough to um, sponsor the paper shredding truck and the document truck. So we have paper shredding on site today. So beyond the cleanup, we're also gathering tons of paper and tons of electronics out of our community. Um, we definitely need volunteers on this day. We hold it right around this weekend every year, depending on when Easter falls. We try to avoid the holiday. But we've had, even though it rained tonight, we're dealing with a little bit soggy conditions. We're having beautiful weather right now. So we usually have about 100 volunteers. And this morning with the picture that was taken, it seemed like we had that this morning again with the cleanup crews that have gone out and around our community. We're in Kutztown with the Old Time Plowboys Tractor Club for day two of their spring plow and show.
Give us a wave, guys. We have satisfaction out of doing their work, whether it be carpentry or uh, farming. They just enjoy what they do. All right, you can lay down. Go ahead. Denver's <laughs> Little axe man. You got it. All right, All right. thank you. Woo. That's heavy. You did a good job. Go. You ready? Pedal, pedal, pedal. We're in Kutztown with the Old Time Plowboys Tractor Club, and we caught up with the club president, Dwayne Otto. Dwayne, thank you for inviting us today. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Now, this is your 29th annual spring plowing show, correct? And uh, That is correct. And uh, 29 years, and in August, it'll be our 30th. That's really good, because uh, I know uh, you're one of the more popular tractor clubs in the area, and you're very involved with the community as well. And I understand that you guys really had to battle the elements this weekend. Yeah, yesterday it came out. We didn't know what we were to expect. We set up on Friday, we dealt with the rain. Yesterday we dealt with the high winds, had a couple canopies come down. But all in all, it was a great day. A lot of people did come out. Today came out. We had rain today. Uh, had to postpone a couple of events, but the guys are back out in the fields doing what they need to do, and we're having some fun with the youth of the club. Yeah, we got uh, video footage of the pedal tractor pulls earlier, yeah. and I understand, and we got video footage and talking to some of your club members that uh, for the canopies, you guys were actually using tractors and strapping them fast that to the tractors bad. for anchors. We couldn't hold them. We didn't have the manpower to have everybody standing holding tents, so anybody who had a spare tractor, we brought it on down and we strapped the tents down, and it worked out real well. A little bit of weight there. That'll hold them. Yeah, that'll keep it down. Well, there you go at the clubs, you know, if you run into that trouble, park the tractors next to the canopy and tie them fast, right? You bet it ain't going anywhere. Well, I know um, the people are coming out. You have the days of old playing. Yep. And uh, what, else, what are you going to have coming up here for the younger tractors uh, usually, and everything? Usually we have a garden tractor pull for the uh, club members, but due to the weather we didn't know, we kind of canceled it out. So we bring out a dead sled just to let the youth have some fun with it. It gets them to understand how to pull, and we can work with them. So when they want to pull a rail sled, they have the opportunity. Okay, good. And uh, I understand uh, talking with Cindy and some of the others of your members of your club that you got all your plowing done yesterday, though. Everything's being plowed. It's closed up. They're up there finishing disking now. So once the disking is done, we can fertilize. Hopefully the weather cooperates. We can come back out and roll it back in, color pack it in, and get planting. All right. Good job. Well, things are picking up here, and i got to let you go to get back to work. But thank you very much for inviting thank us. Thank you very much. And um, tell us about your upcoming events. Well, we got a open tractor, antique tractor pull, July 13th. R rain date is the 14th. That's going to start at 10 a.m. weigh-ins, and we're hoping to uh, get something new moving in this organization. Gives us a little lot of attention, and that's what we want to do. We want to get more members, hopefully more active, mm -hmm. and uh, we've just figured let's give it a go and see how it works. Then August, uh, in August, the second weekend of August, we're going to have our 30th annual summer show and that's going to be a dedication uh, we build a memorial garden for all past members that have passed on and we want to we want to do something special for them yeah and uh, i know you have days of old today and you have musical entertainment lined up for that weekend as well too yes we do we have uh, quite a bit of musical entertainment i'll keep it a secret so that means you can go search on our website to see what we got going on okay and what would that website be it is www.oldtimeplowboys.com. <laughs> okay. All right. Facebook's also out there for you. Well, I, that's what I do. I jump on the Facebook to get a hold of you guys and the, some of the other clubs. So um, that's very good to keep us informed. And thank you very much thank for your you. service to the community. Not a problem. Have a good day. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah.
Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We have a special musical guest joining us for the Out and About show. Rob and Jim. Rob and Jim will be joining us very shortly. Hi, I'm Jason Weir, and today we're here in McCunji Park 
for the Lower Lehigh Lions Club's flea market. We're going to have a lot of fun here on CWTAP television. Hi ladies and gentlemen, we caught up with Heather Day, member of Lower Lehigh Lions Club. Well, thank you for inviting us to your flea market sure today. Sure thing, nice to see you. You actually have some good weather because I know in the past you've had a sort of like a little history of bad weather sometimes. Uh, the last three Mays we canceled because of rain, but it was a blessing to have a nice, beautiful, sunny day today. All right. Tell us about the Lions Club. First off, tell us about your local chapter and uh, or club and uh, what, what do the Lions Club actually do nationally? Okay. My Lions Club is the Lower Lehigh Lions Club based out of McCungee. We are involved in our town with community vision, hearing, and um, hunger control or hunger um, advocacy where we provide food baskets and um, information to people for holiday meals and gift cards and then we also just picked up uh, pediatric cancer so those four things are things that not only local chapters deal with or address but also Lions Club International okay so now you know uh, our audience covers a pretty wide area in the Lehigh Valley okay. in the eastern parts of Phillipsburg down into Chester County if someone out outside the Mukunji area is interested in learning more about the Lions Club, how can they do that? They can look for a local chapter or um, probably go online to any town and type in that town's name or city's name and add Lions Club next to it and you'll find a local chapter. Okay, very good. All right, uh, how many members do you currently have in your local chapter? My group probably has, I'm gonna say, 25 active members. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, and uh, like we always say on our shows, we always try to give publicity to the different volunteer organizations. And ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of good work being done by good people in the community. Unfortunately, when you listen and listen to the news, watch the news on a lot of the big networks, the lot of the good news and the good work that people like you do is usually overshadowed by the bad news. But uh, we want to thank you for all your good work you're oh, doing. Oh. And uh, do you have any other events coming up? I know yes, you. I know you do. We go pretty slow during the summer months, and then we start back up again in the fall, and we'll have another fall flea market, and then we work our way through. We have a chicken barbecue coming Father's Day weekend, and that's over in the Coles Complex in Trexler Town. But outside of that, please, everyone, look around. If you'd like to join a volunteer group, the Lions has been very fulfilling. Okay. And you also are in charge of the McCungee Halloween Parade, correct? Correct. I am in charge of that with Dave Briggs. Oh, you yourself, I too. Wow, you wear many hats, huh? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much thank for your you service so to our community. Oh, thank you. Hi. <laughs> okay. Hi. Yep. Beautiful day at last. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, can I get a wave? Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Hi guys. I haven't seen them since two years. Uh, 
Now, try to give us a wave without falling over. Hey, Paulette. Give us a wave. Oh, I'll give you a wave. They're right down there. It's a bargain. Ten dollars. Wow. Don't miss it. Okay, give us a wave. And I want to see that raccoon. <laughs> yeah. Saint Nick. And who you have there? Saint Nick? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Saint Nick. Okay. And a boatload of books and all sorts of other. And what'd you get? A couple paddles for my um, graph and some tubing for all right. whatever projects. And here comes their house. son with the hat he just went and got. What'd you, what did you get? I uh, just picked up the hat. All right, you're looking good. Oh, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, for our What Makes Me Tick segment of the show, we caught up with Harold Hilbert, and he's going to tell us what makes him tick, building and showing miniature military jeeps. So we're going to scoot back here to the jeeps here, catch up with Harold. Thank you for joining us, Harold. You're welcome. Okay, Harold, we're off to the side so that everyone can see our miniature vehicles here. So what got you interested? I know we've we interviewed you a couple times in the past, but for our newer viewers, what got you interested in this hobby? Well, the way we were treated when we come back from the Vietnam War era. And I at that time decided to do my own thing and I started with one Jeep and I wanted a full-size Jeep to haul it. Well, that didn't work out. So now I have a total of seven and I take them to different shows and things like that. And this past spring, when they declared March 28th as Vietnam Veterans Day, I was invited to take them different places, like the, the battlefield down at, at uh, Valley Forge. And I was asked if I'd bring them down to Washington, D.C. to the wall. Wow. And I said, well, I don't normally drive that far. Then I was told they're going to send a truck. Oh. But they didn't tell me All when. Right. Can you scoot over here a little second here so we can look into the camera a little better? All right. So now so now these are going to going down to the wall, you said? Eventually, yes. So you're just waiting for the phone call, right? That is correct, yes. Wow, that's quite an honor. Yeah. It's actually my dream come true when I started this. Wow. Okay, so now... So what do we have here, uh, if you want to give a brief description on a couple of these and, you know, tell us how, how you go about building them, where do you got the parts and everything. Because I remember in the past you told me that uh, it's not easy to get the kits to build a lot of the stuff you make too, right? Yes. Uh, the bodies are basically all the same and they come out of the Philippines. Uh, the first two, the Army and the Marine, their own garden tractor chassis, which do not hold up not with the way I use them. And the, the Navy and the Air Force that's in the back, uh, I build my own chassis. I'm still using Briggs and Stratton motors and Tecumseh rears, but it's different variation. There are no two the same. So you're trying new things as you go? Yes, I, I found an easier way to do it. And uh, at my age, 75, that's what I got to look for, an easier way. Okay. So. Very nice. Because I know I've seen you in parades and stuff and uh, driving around. And like you said, uh, well, these got to be durable enough to drive through a parade. But then like in this case here, you're driving through fields as well. Yes. I have two others that are a little bit larger than these. And now I decide I'm going to use the newer ones for my parade vehicles. So uh, if you have you ever counted your hours, how long it takes you to build one? Yes, I did. And then when I started adding it up, that was with the first one here with the Army. And when I added it up and I come up with over 2,000 hours, I thought, why, well, 
I have to be crazy to spend that much time. So I threw the book away. Now it doesn't bother me. There you go. You don't look at the time, right? That's right. Well, when you enjoy something, that's that's a big difference, you know, because uh, that's like we always say on the station, it doesn't matter what people are doing, if whether it's volunteer work or their profession. You can tell the difference between somebody just doing something and somebody that is enjoying what they do. And I can tell just by what you're doing here with the building and the displaying and everything, you're enjoying it because yes. you could easily be home doing some of your own work at home, but you're out bringing this to the, to the public and letting everybody enjoy them. Well, I put it this way. When the young, I don't call them kids, the young people, when they come over and they look at it and they enjoy it, that's what's keeping me young. All right, that sounds good. So I hope I'm going to be around for a lot more time that I can take these different places and have uh, people enjoy them as much as I do. Okay, so now to get an idea on the, the size and the scale of these Jeeps, you can see, you want to come over here, Harold, and stand next to them, and I'll stand next to one. So you can see how high they are. They only go up, the hook goes up to basically between the, the knee and the thigh. And then the window is about a little bit above our waist. Okay, about waist tight. Okay. Can you climb in one and show us what you look like inside? All right, now. Yep, got to open up the door now. <laughs> look at that. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see Harold at different parades and events throughout the, uh, the summer, especially here in the Lehigh Valley. But eventually, these Jeeps will not be here for a while because they're going to the big spot there in Washington, D.C. So, okay, well, thank you very much, Harold. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for telling us what makes you tick. These bodies are actually considered half scale of a full-size 44 Willys. So, okay, thank you very much. This portion of Out and About with the Ritter Boys is brought to you by the TG Countryside. They're located at the top of Charmerville Hill at the junction of routes 29 and 100 in Emmaus. I have the hot dog. Serving all kinds of good treats, sandwiches and more. <laughs> they also serve all kinds of ice cream products, including their own homemade ice cream, hand-dipped ice cream on cones, and they also have ice cream products pre-packaged and specialty items for your special events. So stop in and visit our friends Tommy Gwynn and their staff here at the TG Countryside, located at the top of Charmerville Hill in Emmaus. They're open seven days a week. Thank you for watching. Join us next time as we go out and about.